All right, so the perfect header absolutely exists. Now I want to show you actually how to make one. Okay, so it starts with five things that is needed on the actual header, of course, right? So first, number one is a player photo. It's a very good staple just to have a little bit more personality in your header overall. Of course, in your name, you need your sponsors. If you have no sponsors, you're gonna place those sponsors with like other social media. And then overall in the header as well, you're gonna need some kind of sort of description of what the actual person that you are. So if you're like a professional player for Valorant or League of Legends, it might be kind of cool and beneficial to actually share that as well. And then of course, your team logo. So those are your five things we're gonna put on the header overall. And additionally, though, you need a bit of a good color scheme, right? So hopefully your team has a main color. So if it's like an optic, it's a green. If it's like a, a phase, it's a red or 100 these is a red, things like that, right? So using that as your main color and then black and white as supporting colors, your best bet to kind of create a really good color scheme. So red, black and white. If you have any secondary colors, I'm gonna show you guys how to use those as well. But red, black and white will be the colors I'm using today's video. And you can change your red out for whatever your team color is. So let's actually get into this and show you guys how to do one. All right, so first things first is that player footer, right? So I got a nice cool player footer. You can actually see how cool the actual angle is too, right? It's very personal, it has a lot of personality to it. It's not your usual. Right, it has a little more personality. So with this, I'm gonna take this, Control T, I'm gonna make this a little more bigger. So when I say a little bit, I'm probably gonna zoom in nice and just nice and close, right? I think somewhere right here is a nice, good, uh, just overall just look to. We can see how much bigger we make it. That way, the actual header is filled very much so mainly with the player focus. We have a nice little player hierarchy in the overall design. So with this, I'm going to click on the actual photo, right? I'm going to press W on my keyboard or use the magic wand tool. This will give me the option right here to select subject. Before I actually do it, though, I'm going to drop this little arrow down, press cloud for detailed results. I just like the results better. Click on select subject and overall you can see a nice immediate change where we get this little selection just going around the actual player. I can now click back on my photo, click over here to layer mask and just click so and it meets, just cuts it out for me. Nice and just simple, right? So you have no pen tooling. No, no, please. Okay, so with this though, I'm gonna make this color the background really quickly red. And that is the overall team color, right? So I'm gonna use it red. If it's green, like I said before, it's just you change it to green, right? Uh, and with this though, we can see our hair is a little bit kind of foggy, has this white kind of like haze around it. We're gonna quickly get rid of that. So I'm gonna click on this little layer mask, double click on it actually, opens up my nice little properties table, which then gives it the option to select and mask. I'm gonna click that. And with the select and mask, it brings us to a nice different table here. You see over here on this left hand side, we have this little cool thing called a refine brush tool. I'm going to click on that. And over here, right where the white is, my crosshair, right? You can see I'm hovering over the white. I'm going to click once and I'm just going to drag and give me a nice little hair. No, I'm not going to go too over here. If I go over here, it's going to get a weird. It's just going to don't do that. Okay. And overall, go only where the hair is, just like so. Unclick, click over here again. Get nice and just close to the edges as possible just like this and overall we're good so now with this so if i press ok for a second right we can see that white haze is gone if i control z and you know whatever right you can see it's all gone however though the overall color is still kind of there it looks a little bit more sort of like pinkish so what i'm gonna do also if we look right here as well you see how there's like outlines in here like things like that right here as well maybe we might have to fix that but like these like right here you can see around his collar if i click back on my layer mask go back to the mask down here it says decontaminate colors. You want to make sure we select this. And once we do, you can also see if I press OK, right? You can see his hair gets a little more darker, makes the background a little bit overall more just overall. I guess all just kind of makes sense. It makes it match the colors, right? But also the outlines and like white outlines around his shirt also goes away. So we also love that as well. So with this now, I'm just going to press right click and then convert to a smart object. So I have that all locked and set. And uh, we're good for now. For now. For now. However, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna press a sooner or I'm gonna press a text tool, excuse me, and write out our actual name of our player. So if your name is whoever it is, I'm gonna use a sooner for example. So I'm gonna use a sooner. I'm gonna use heavy italic. I'm gonna change this to a nice white. I'm not gonna use pure white. Always use a nice offset white. That'll give you guys that nice simple touch and make your graphics look a lot less cheap and like, not it, right? So I'm gonna click where it says pure white right here, right? I'm gonna drop this down to something like this, right? Look at that, way prettier white, just saying. However, after we size our name, I can just go ahead and duplicate this, shrink this down a lot. And of course, like I said before, I'm gonna put Valorant Pro Player, just like that. You're gonna write out professional overall, but I don't wanna waste too much time or misspell it. So I'm gonna go over here and just change this to a nice subtext font, like a geome is pretty good to me. Let's shrink this down a little bit more as well. 
And just like that, we have our third object in there. And the, th or the fourth thing is actually the actual sponsor. So I'm gonna take these sponsors. Like I said before, if you guys do not have any sponsors on your brand yet or for your eSport or for personal, you know, things, obligations to put on your header, I would probably say translate this into your social media. So let's pretend if this was YouTube, this was like Twitch, and this was like another so like another social media, right? What I would do is just add a little a little slash, right? Backslash Seso HQ. Oops. Right. And with this, just take this and just move it just like so. It'll just basically say, hey, all these social media links are backslash Seso HQ, wherever your actual handle is. If they're different handles, then you probably just split the logos, but you guys get that point, right? However, overall, I'm gonna leave it as so and keep my sponsors there, which looks really good and nice. However, though. I am gonna change the color of this though. I'm gonna go ahead and just do color overlay and click on this red just like so and then drag this further down just before I hit to this black. This is the black part of the line, right? I'm gonna drag that and just kind of move it like right here. That way it's not actually pure black, it has a little bit of that red hint to it, which really helps our color theory just kind of feel a little more, uh, just better in my opinion. However, I think we're pretty set. I'm gonna kind of level this out like so, right? And now the, the next thing, of course, is actually the logo. The last thing, I guess. The logo, drag this baby in. This will be the team logo, sort of your team logo is. You can just throw it on this right-hand side, just like so. I'm gonna throw it below his finger, because why not? Just something like that, I think looks pretty good. Uh, boom, right? Let's also make this one white, so the same white as the Asuna text. Boom, we're good, so okay. Next thing now, we have all the elements on the header, right? We have all five things we talked about in the very beginning. The next thing is color correction. So let's do that right now. So on this player photo, when it's on a smart object, I'm gonna go to filter, camera raw filter. Now, once this actually opens up, we are gonna be going under basic. And before we even see anything, I would recommend you guys to click this little thing right here. This is the before and after. So if I click on it now, right, we see a nice before, which is the original and after, which will be the thing that we're gonna be focusing on right now. So. With this, the first thing I want to do is I want to just uh, just a tiny bit of a little bit of exposure, just if it's like a little bit too dark. But immediately what we're going to do afterwards is use a little bit of shadow. I love to put my shadows up, which kind of helps kind of bring more detail of the hair out. You can see a little hair difference here to here. You can see a lot more hair and also a lot more kind of like folds in like fol follicles. You guys have more folds in like the overall dress, right? Shirt. <clears throat> Anyway, I'm gonna lower the black sound a little bit as well. That one's I'll say like negative 18 or so is pretty good. With that, I'm also gonna up the actual texture. This will give the actual overall uh, image a bit of like a clarity issue to it, or not a clarity, but like I'll say like a sharpen, plus like uh, just literal adding texture as well. So you can see difference here of these eyes, like a little more sharpen. You can see his clothing's a little more rough and like grungy and tough. Uh, that overall sports vibe that I always would love. So texture is a plus for me. Now clarity as well, I'm gonna add this up as well. I'm gonna say about like, like a nine or a 10. It's basically, clarity is the same thing as texture, but let's say it also involves using like a like a contrast slider as well. So I wouldn't go too high with that because if you can quickly just see, it looks not great when you put it too high. So like I would say like a nice nine or uh, eight to 10 is a pretty good ratio. Besides that, I'm gonna go under detail, take my sharpen, just bring this up. So if I just bring it all the way up for a second, you can see these little like odd, uh, markings that are happening on the actual overall picture. I would just scale this down or scale this until right before you kind of see all those things happening. So I'm gonna say 23, pretty good to me, right? That didn't mean to rhyme, God. Mm. Anyway, I'm gonna go right back into basic and I'm gonna go to where it says texture and I'm gonna also make sure I, right now the, the lighting of this photo is very studio-esque, right? Like you can see me, right? I have a lot more color and like you just going on for me, obviously. Obviously, but if I go over here to texture, uh, excuse me, temperature, and move this a little bit further up as well, maybe the tint a little bit to the left or right, let's just say something like this is pretty good. Not too much yet because we're still gonna color grade this. We can see the difference between our faces here. We get a little more color that's going on on this left-hand side or the right-hand side, which I am in love with. So with this though, I'm gonna go to color grading. Color grading is very important, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now, if I press okay for a second, you can definitely tell right now that this photo on this red does not work because this is a little bit too yellowish toned and it doesn't really work out for us, right? So I'm gonna go back into my camera off filter. So now we know this yellow is not gonna work out for us, but we know if we're using a red background, a warmer tone will help us, right? If we're using like a blue, for instance, a cooler tone will help us. So for overall, what I would say for the shadows I'm gonna start off with is I'm gonna basically make it orange tone, right? It's so gonna go to the orange, Find a nice spot. Once you kind of find your spot, you can click again, move it left and right, which will basically uh, basically up the 
saturation of the red uh, or orange tone, which I'm not gonna want too much of, but I'm gonna say right around, I think here is pretty good. I do like how that looks, okay? So for the mid-tone, same thing. I'm gonna go right over to the orange area. I'll say that looks pretty good. That's like a reddish orange. I like the tone a little bit. I'm not gonna say too high. I wanna keep that circle very close to the middle. As you can see right here, it's very close to the middle. We're not all the way out here. We're very close to the middle still. I'm just getting a little bit of color grading, just like that. Last but not least though is of course the highlights. I'm gonna go over the orange again and click over here and kind of move around so we find a nice good spot. Bring that saturation up a little bit. And I would say overall, that looks pretty good. Now, if I say to myself, I press okay, now, if I get out of here, I mean, the difference is literally night and day, in my opinion. Like, if I turn this color filter on and off, you can see it's very, very kind of cool tone, a little bit of a blue, very obvious studio light. If I click that, of course, camera off filter again to show the actual filter, we get that nice orange tone that very much so matches the red of the background and color grading, A1 perfect. Now, besides color grading, though, acne, right? If I zoom in really quick, we can see a little bit of facial acne that's going on here. So I'm gonna click back on my smart object layer, which will bring me into a new layer, right? So in this document, whatever I save and exit out of, it'll change in the original document, okay? So with this though, I'm gonna click on our photo. I'm gonna press J on my keyboard. Uh, make sure we of course click on it, scroll down to the patch tool so we have that. And all we gotta do now is take it, circle around some acne and move it to a clear spot. Right, so I'm gonna take all these different things. We can go pretty fast. It, it helps keep a bit of the texture as well. So I would just basically move it just like so. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing on all these little acne spots to get a nice little clear skin. And just like that, we're pretty good. So if I save this, Control S, get rid of this, and then go back to the original, we can see if I do a before and after, we get rid of that acne, it just looks a little more just, just, just better, right? Overall, I think that's pretty okay. But besides that, I'm gonna make another new layer right above the photo right? Whatever the color of the person's eyes is. And then he's very lucky, he had a green eyes, right? So I'm just gonna click, hold alt to get the eyedropper tool, click and find this nice little green on his eyes. Click just around his eyes, just like so, just like this. Same thing over here as well, right? Just like that. Now with this though, go to normal, color dodge, and just like that, we make his eyes pop out just a little bit more, right? Now with that, another new layer, but this time we're gonna use a white, okay? So I'm gonna take the white over here for a second and go over here toward his like white in his eye, just like so, and kind of click around just like this, same thing over here. And of course, it's gonna be a little bit too obvious if I do that, so I'm gonna take an eraser for a second, kind of go over the edge once again. And just like this, I'm gonna take this now and just lower the opacity as what it is just right now to around like a 30, 38%. And if I just zoom out for a second, you can see how much more engaging his eyes are. So if I take this off, Right, you can see his eyes kind of get lost in the graphic, but if I put it on, his eyes are very present, looks really good, and it actually looks like he's looking at you now, right? So I'm gonna lower this white just a little bit more though. But overall, that's that's kind of how I wanna have it, okay? So next up is actually gonna be a sort of like uh, uh, another idea, an additional idea if you guys don't have a team pattern. So usually a lot of teams have patterns, so if like 100 Thieves VCT, you have this really cool triangular pattern. If you have like a 100 Thieves graphic or like an LCS, you have this cool, like cool uh, texture type, you know, text pattern. But for a lot of people, they don't actually have patterns. So for this instance, I'm gonna use a name. I'm gonna press Alt, drag it. That'll make a duplicate right below the player, right? So if I move this now with the move tool, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this nice and big, pretty big to be honest. Something like this I think is pretty good. Like that, right? So it's basically really big behind the player, halfway around the graphic. I don't have to show the entire name. I want, kinda, I want it to kind of stop halfway where the name is. And I'm gonna change this color to the same color that I changed the color to of these sponsors. So what that is, is basically clicking the red background, dragging this pretty far down. So we get that nice sort of like almost black but not black color that has that little bit of color hue into it, press okay, right? And just like so, we have the nice background there and it kind of really holds the actual player and the other name, I think really, really well in my opinion. I can't lie, I think it looks really, really good. So I'm gonna take this really quick, shrink this down a little bit, kind of to color, uh, correct this for a second. I'm gonna click back on the name, use another layer mask or player, click on the layer mask again. Now I'm gonna go over here, and with this layer mask selected, my colors immediately change to black and white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the black to erase. And of course, if you didn't know, if I press X on my keyboard or switch the colors again, uh, the white will actually fill back in. But I'm gonna take the black, right? I'm gonna click around just like so and erase that outline because it looks a little too ugly for me to be okay with it. Boom. Something over here as well. 
Perfect. Now, in an in instance, I just want to kind of share an instance with you guys. If you do have multiple team colors, what I would suggest you guys to do, you can kind of tell my player is hitting the top of the banner and also the bottom of the banner, right? I'm not going to leave enough space for it to kind of be like this or whatnot, right? That looks a bit too awkward. I think the spacing should definitely feel fill the top of the frame and the bottom of the frame, which then allows you guys, if I want to make a new layer right below or above the color, let's just say we have a secondary color of like, uh, I don't know, like a yellowish tone, right? And I was going to click over here. I can basically just find, kind of separate it like so. And I can also add an additional color like that. Or I can add it to the other side if I wanted to. Right? These are all just like different ideas for the record. If you have multiple colors you need to choose to use, that's probably the best way to go about it, in my opinion. That's easy to like obtain and, and do. But overall, this is the design. This is the graphic that you can use as a sort of starting point. Also, the perfect esports header mod I add because what you could do now is I, well, let's just say, right, for instance, I change this font to a different font, right? I'll go with this guy right here. I'm going to kind of shrink this down a little bit more, right? And then for the background font, for this Asuna for the background, right, I'm going to take this. I'm going to change this one to brick, which is also my font, by the way, if you guys didn't know. Uh, probably the best font in the world. I'm kidding. Anyway, make this big. Right, you can see the vibes overall change. You saw I moved it a little bit as well. I don't have to keep it perfectly down to where it was down here, right? It, it, it does look cool too, though. But if I move it over here, that's also a really cool idea. And with that, that changes the entire graphic, right? Um, not, without, without even changing the color. One was like more just like simple and clean. Uh, this one's very much so a little more organic and, and like urban. It kind of has that vibe to it. And besides that, if you have a pattern or a look cool, cool texture, like something like this, hold on. Let's say you're an avid user of the bitmap texture. I'm going to just self plug selfa.com HQ. However, though, if I click on this little bitmap texture, you can see adding texture as well is a very easy way to, of course, more di differentiate this overall idea. But this is basically the perfect esports header that you can take in any direction and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. So with that being said, though, that is the end of the video here today. So I do hope you guys enjoyed learning how to cut things out, place your stuff and adding some texture, different fonts, all that good stuff. But yeah, that's all I got. System HQ out. You gotta keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later, much love, peace. And uh, yeah, get out there and win things. Later.